that was uh, secondary propellant on uh, quad rocket. Maybe this music will be heard at this very moment somewhere beyond our solar system. Beethoven's Fifth Symphony is recorded in the golden record that travels inside the Voyager probe. Voyager's goal is to introduce humanity to any alien life form that it finds. For the past few decades, we humans have dreamed of exploring the final frontier. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Traversing new planets, discovering new life forms. But space exploration has other incentives that we don't usually take into account. And of course, we're talking about money. Our solar system, it is packed with natural resources. All those asteroids traveling across the universe, they're full of gold, they're full of platinum, they're full of all kinds of precious ore. Even some of Saturn's moons are literally natural gas balls. Were you worried that Earth's natural resources would disappear one day? Good news! You don't have to be, because there's plenty to exploit out there in the solar system. And oh, I can tell you, we are talking a hell of a fortune. Space mining is the industry of tomorrow. Or maybe it's the industry of today. And well, what does Luxembourg have to do with all of this? Well, pay attention, because this video is gonna blow your mind. Everyone wonders about life on other planets, but who cares about little green men when you can find natural resources? Can you imagine mining for gold on Mars or discovering uranium on some asteroid near Venus? This might be sounding rather like science fiction to you. Well, commercial space exploration is already a reality. Hayabusa 2, a Japanese spacecraft, arrives at Ryugu asteroid to retrieve minerals. Several space agencies have already found the most valuable asteroid near Earth, and that's Davida. It has a diameter of three football fields with a resource value of an estimated 27 quintillion US dollars. And I'm not making that number up. That's 27 with 18 zeros after it. Some satellites in our own solar system, like Titan orbiting Saturn, are even literally made out of natural gas. So imagine what could happen if one day we could cheaply exploit these resources. It would mean pretty much free energy for everybody. But here comes the question. If you find gold in Australia, then that gold belongs to Australia and it will be extracted following Australian law. Pretty simple. Now some countries have strict regulations, other countries have more flexible ones, but everybody understands who regulates what. But what happens when that gold is on Mars? Who regulates that exactly? And can private companies companies extract it. And if that does happen, what happens if two private companies fight over the mining rights of one asteroid? Well, so far, nobody really seems to care about these potential issues, except one country, Luxembourg. Yep, and that's Luxembourg, that tiny European country with a smaller population than Manhattan. As we told you in this video, Luxembourg is one of the wealthiest countries on Earth. And when you have so much money, you invest your money. And invest it they have. In 2016, the Space Resources Initiative was established, and with it, $223 million of its national space budget was set aside for companies working towards space mining. And as we said, space mining, it sounds pretty amazing, but I mean, how can you invest in something when you don't even know it's gonna be legal. But if there's something Luxembourgish politicians like, it's money. Money and expertise in space. Basically, during the 1980s, Luxembourg was one of the first countries to pass regulations on commercial satellites, so this actually kinda sounds like the perfect job for them. Our goal is to put into place an overall framework for the exploration and commercial use of resources from celestial bodies, such as asteroids or from the moon. 
Etienne Schneider, Luxembourg's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Economy. Deep space industry and planetary resources, two of the leading companies in the field, are already working with Luxembourg's government. In November of 2016, Planetary Resources and Luxembourg struck a $28 million investment deal in exchange for an unspecified equity stake in the company. Both companies predict that as soon as 2025, resources like water, oxygen, hydrogen, and precious metals will be able to be extracted. But the question here is, how can Luxembourg become a leader in this field? Are we really serious about it? And how much money is involved? Well, today we're going to answer all of those questions, but before we do, let's look back at the history. Gold on Mars? Sending a spacecraft to an asteroid's pretty expensive. So, you know, if Muhammad cannot go to the mountain, the mountain must come to Muhammad. Literally here. We're not talking about going to an asteroid, that's way too ambitious. What we're talking about is moving an asteroid away from its normal path and causing it to orbit our planet. Yes, that really is possible, but let us start from the beginning. According to a study published in 2012 by the Keck Institute for Space Studies, ACR, or Asteroid Capture and Return Missions, are going to be feasible in the near future. This kind of mission will make hundreds of tons of asteroid material available within the Earth-Moon system. And well, what does all of this mean? Well, a visit to a nearby captured asteroid would allow for shorter trips for astronauts, which in turn would mean less of a potential radiation hazard for the crew and also more time to work on the materials found in the asteroid. And also, there's going to be far less money wasted on resources and fuel. But I can probably guess what you're thinking right now. How on Earth, or should I say how not on Earth, have the space agencies figured out how to capture an asteroid and bring it into our planet's orbit? Even a tiny asteroid will weigh millions of tons, so we can't just arrive with a crane and move it. Look, when an asteroid passes close to a planet or a large moon, its orbit changes. Basically, a smaller body gets attracted to a bigger one. If we can just push an asteroid a little bit so that it gets closer to the moon, the asteroid can be pulled into orbit around the Earth. And this could be done with a remote-controlled rocket. And if you think I've lost my mind here, it's far from it. In fact, what I just told you is the summary of a paper from the Keck Institute based in California. And this paper was published in 2012, that's seven years before we even made this video. So now you might be wondering, is it possible to take rock samples from an asteroid right now? And the answer to that is yes. The first ones to accomplish this were the Japanese. The Japanese space agency launched a robotic spacecraft called Hayabusa. This spacecraft traveled to the asteroid 25143 Itaka. In 2010, they already had samples from it. And they're not the only ones. NASA launched another spaceship in 2016, the OSIRIS-REx, whose goal is to reach an asteroid named Bennu. The spacecraft approached the asteroid in August 2018, extended an articulated arm, and took a sample of the asteroid's surface material. The spacecraft is going to return to Earth in 2023. Of course, all of these missions are not exactly space mining, but they are testing all of the technologies that would be required for commercial-scale space mining. This is why, in 2014, Planetary Resources revealed a full-scale prototype of its new spacecraft that will search for promising mining sites. But, as I said at the beginning, this is not the end of the story, because nothing is ever that simple, especially when it comes to space. Part of the main issue is that we don't really know much about asteroids. Many of them appear to be rubber piles, and in some cases, these piles spin so rapidly that they look more like flying saucers. Other asteroids, due to their composition, they might be exceptionally awkward to manipulate. We might, however, have more options with solid bodies. A spaceship can dock on an asteroid and push against it, but there are complications due to microgravity and asteroid rotation. It is possible that a number of cables could be looped around the asteroid, to hold it securely in place. All of this would require a lot of fuel and a great deal of money. But anyway, we're veering a little too into the realm of science and technology here, so let's go back to the political side of space mining, shall we? 
the Lux Space Empire. As the development of the space mining industry progresses, the need for a legal framework regulating space resource utilization increases. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967 was the first to attempt some sort of international space law framework. But during the time the treaty was signed, nobody really cared about commercial space exploration. Instead, in the midst of the Cold War, there was a lot of concern about using space as a battlefield. This is why the treaty focuses mostly on those matters. Anyway, international treaties, they're a pretty weird animal. In fact, there's no world police that's going to enforce them. All we have are international sanctions. And I mean, give the Trump and Pence administration another term and they'll bring a space force, or so they say. The other day, because we're doing a tremendous amount of work in space, I said, maybe we need a new force. We'll call it the Space Force. And I was not really serious. And then I said, what a great idea. Maybe we'll have to do that. That could happen. This is not exactly the first time a U.S. president has said something like this. In 1983, President Reagan proposed the creation of the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI. This was a project to build a space-based anti-ballistic missile system. Of course, media immediately started calling it Star Wars. The purpose of this project was to defend the U.S. from Soviet missiles by intercepting them during various phases of their flight. This technology proved to be too complex and the project was soon canceled. But the point here is that nobody seemed to care about this project violating the Outer Space Treaty. That said, when it comes to space mining, the treaty states the following. Activities of non-governmental entities in outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies, shall require authorization and continuing supervision by the appropriate state party to the treaty. In other words, the treaty has two key points. The first is that a non-governmental entity, this is a private business, must receive permission from their country in order to operate in outer space. And the second point is that you can do as much research as you want, that's okay with everybody, but what about making profits? I mean, this is really where nobody knows what to do. And this is where two countries come into the picture, America and Luxembourg. These are the pioneers in creating a legal framework to provide legal certainty for investors and mining companies. And this is very important because both America and Luxembourg have very special ways of approaching mining. Most resource-rich countries like Saudi Arabia or Argentina consider those resources to be strategic. This means, as I've already mentioned, that if you live in Argentina and you find oil, it doesn't belong to you but rather to the government and the government can decide when and how to exploit those resources. In America and in Luxembourg, the private owner is the one who decides. This means that so far, companies will have a bigger role in space mining. And this also means that many other countries and experts have come up with criticisms. A lot of that criticism was heard during a UN subcommittee that deals with the peaceful use of space. But more controversial than the American law is the Luxembourgish one. One of the most vocal critics is Gabriel Zuckman, a far left-wing economist who studied under the French economist Thomas Piketty. In case you don't know, Piketty is the author of Capital in the 21st Century, a very notable book that's sort of a revival of Marxist theory. This is what being an offshore financial center means. It's not diversification, it's just extending the logic of being a tax haven to a new area. Gabriel Zuckman, economist at UC Berkeley. Basically, the Luxembourg law differs from the American one in one very important way. The American law says that they will only give permits to American mining companies. An American mining company must have offices on American soil and the owners must be American residents. But in the case of Luxembourg, you just need to create a company with fiscal residence in Luxembourg. In other words, let's say an Australian company wants to do mining on one satellite. Well, they just need to create a branch with a legal address in Luxembourg. And there doesn't even need to be a big facility there. Simply a mailbox is enough. And then suddenly, boom, you have the legal vehicle that you need to go and find gold on Mars. In other words, Americans can reap the benefits of American companies doing space mining, while Luxembourgers will open up a brand new industry to the rest of the world. And this is why so many investors are choosing this country 
country as a place to start research projects. This brand new industry is precisely the target audience of the Luxembourg Space Cluster, an organization working towards raising the visibility of Luxembourg's space capabilities internationally through collaborative research and innovative projects. Luxembourg's space industry is currently comprised of 30 companies, 700 employees, and an average turnover of approximately 2 billion euros. Yes, 2 billion. The industry today encompasses 25 companies and two public research organizations. But hold on a second, because not everything is sunshine and rainbows. Luxembourg still has to go through a lot of hoops to completely privatize space mining. Article 1, paragraph 1 of the Outer Space Treaty has a pretty interesting clause. The states are under the obligation to share the benefits resulting from their exploration of outer space. This could mean that if a Luxembourg-based company makes a profit, they couldn't take all of that profit. Somehow, they would have to work out a way to share it with the more than 190 countries that exist on Earth, which makes it sound like not such a great deal. Well, luckily for Luxembourg, international law is very easy to reinterpret. In fact, having no legal precedence for space mining, it's hard to determine what exactly it does mean to share the benefits with the rest of the world. Perhaps you could claim that mining in itself benefits humankind as a whole. Maybe we could even sort the things out with some sort of international tax that would be collected by… Uh, we'll figure that out later. It would be collected by somebody. So far what we can say is there's virtually nobody enforcing international law. All we have is two countries, America and Luxembourg, with a clear, business-friendly legal framework. But now it's your turn. Do you think we're ready for space mining? Would you like to see it become commonplace in the next few years? Well, please leave your answers in the comments section below. If you want to know why Luxembourg is so rich in the first place, do check out this other video we made, and also don't forget to visit our friends from ReconsiderMedia.com. They're the podcast that provided the vocals in this video that were not mine. And if you like this video, remember we publish new ones every week. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a post. And as always, I'll see you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear more of my lovely voice, don't forget to check out the Reconsider podcast at ReconsiderMedia.com. Reconsider is a podcast that challenges you to reconsider your views by providing context, but we don't don't do the thinking for you.